Wouldn't it be cool to become a psychic? How would you like to connect with strangers and make new friends faster? Or perhaps you're into business, or there's just someone you want to impress. Hey Brainwash friends, I'm Aaron Tupaz of Positively Brainwashed, and today I will cover the Full Facts Book of Cold Reading by Ian Rowland. I've used a lot of these techniques discussed in this book in the past to pretend to be a fortune teller or a psychic. The book is the most in-depth I've ever read in this subject and will break everything down. However, I'm only going to touch up on some of the techniques in this book that are more applicable to your day-to-day -day lives, such as cold reading and making predictions. So if you really want to trick people, hopefully in an ethical or fun way, that you can communicate with spirits and the dead, read poems, tell people what the future holds based on tarot cards or their astrological signs, or just want to learn how the professionals do it to protect yourself from manipulation, then I suggest you get the book. Now the first technique I'll share is the golden rule of cold reading which is yes and no but. This means if your prediction or guess is correct, or even just a maybe, simply say end or just keep going and add on. But if your prediction misses, say but and then give an explanation or just make another guess. With all my years of cold reading, this is the most important rule that has helped me. For example, I can tell you're an independent person. Definitely. And based on our conversation, you know, I can tell that you like to lead more than follow. I guess. Sometimes. Yes, and I have a feeling that you're more confident than most people. Uh, not really. Ah, but I'm sure you can be when you're doing an activity that you love to do. You're right. Now if you're wondering how can cold reading help you in your day-to-day -day life, well then remember the old saying, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Making people feel as if you've known them their whole life can make them instantly feel that you understand and care about them, and it also demonstrates that you're perceptive. Also, it makes for a fun first conversation, because even if you get your guess wrong, they'll wonder, how come he thought that about me? Next, technique number two is vanishing negatives. Learn this technique and you will never ever be wrong again when asking a question that prompts a yes or no response. To do this, simply reformat your question to include a negative word like not or don't. And if you get the question right, then simply say something like, yeah, that's what I thought. And if you get it wrong, simply say, no, I didn't think so. Here's an example. Instead of asking, do you work for yourself? Say, you don't work for yourself, do you? No, I don't. No, I didn't think so because you don't seem to be cut out to be one of those flashy egocentric entrepreneurs with all that stress and the hassle. Most of them never get anywhere anyways. Now for the other scenario. You don't work for yourself, do you? Yes, I do actually. Have done for a while. Yeah, that's what I thought. I can tell you're not cut out to be just another 9 to 5 wage slave. That could never be truly fulfilling for someone like you. You have too much drive and too many good ideas of your own. The next technique is to memorize some Barnum statements. These are statements that are true for most people. Here's a few examples. You tend to feel you have a lot of unused capacity and that people don't always give you full credit for your abilities. Some of your hopes and goals tend to be pretty unrealistic. You often give yourself quite a hard time over your mistakes and shortcomings, which perhaps other people wouldn't even worry about. Now remember, if they reject your statement, remember the golden rule. Yes and no but. So if they deny the last example, you could say, Ah, but this tendency is one you have learned to overcome. You have probably learned how damaging it can be to be too self-critical, and respects and all the credit to you for having matured. The next technique is the rainbow ruse. These are statements which credits the person with both a personality trait and its opposite. For example, I would say that on the whole, you're the quiet type, but when the circumstances are right, you can be quite the life and soul of the party. You can be a very considerate person and very quick to provide for others, but there are times, if you are honest to yourself, you can be very selfish. Other good transitions to connect the two opposites are, at other times, and yet you also have the potential to be. These work because majority of people's personalities are not static and changes depending on the situation or environment. Technique number five is fine flattery. This is simply a compliment that compares the person to the general population. If I just told you, you are wonderfully honest. While this is definitely flattery, some people will become suspicious of this blatant flattery and will simply reject it. Instead, it's better to say something like, you are way more honest than most people I meet. 
A bonus tip is to give traits to people that you want them to have, like honesty. Then they'll have to live up to it. So if you want to increase compliance, then compliment them that they're more open-minded than most people. For example, I like how you're so open-minded. Most people need to be like you. Next is psychic credits. These are character statements which credit the person with some form of psychic or intuitive gifts. The psychology behind this is that if you can convince people that they're at least somewhat psychic, then they're more likely to believe you're psychic. Like the previous technique, it's not effective to just say, hey, you're psychic too, or you're very intuitive. It's better to say, I bet you're probably the type of person who will be thinking about someone and the next thing you know, they message or call you. Am I right? Next, technique number seven is sugar lumps. You can use these when you sense people are being closed-minded. For example, you know in some ways, you have become very defensive, almost as if you're locked up in your own secure little castle. You know you won't come to any harm if you lower your defenses a little. Who knows, you might find a few of the answers that you've been looking for. Technique number eight is the Jack Statement. These are statements that are based on the different stages of life that for the most part, we all pass through. So you'll often be correct when you say these. For people in their 30s or 40s, you could say something like, I bet you probably had a lot of goals and dreams when you were younger. And I bet that somewhere deep down, there is a part of you that sometimes just wants to scrap everything, get out of the rut, and start over again. This time, doing things your way. Now for younger people still developing their careers, you could say, Now I bet you sometimes feel frustrated that your own ideas, talents, and abilities aren't given their full recognition. Technique number nine is incidental questions. Now some people won't think you're psychic if you ask them direct questions like, are you satisfied in terms of your career or is there a problem? Or what is it about your health that concerns you? Because a skeptic would be like, uh, shouldn't you just know that? Instead, it's more slick to add incidental questions at the end of your guesses. Some examples are, now why would that be? Is this making sense to you? Can you relate to this? Does this sound right? The point I'm trying to make is that you want to extract information from people without them realizing it. And your inflection and tone of voice will make a big difference to the success of this illusion. Now a more advanced way is to ask questions that are ambiguous in the sense that it can possibly be misinterpreted as a statement. For instance, now you seem like someone who likes to do things their way. This is important to you. Then simply pause and wait for them to say something. The tenth technique is the Sherlock strategy. This is extracting information by observing the person and then making guesses. For example, if you observe someone has long, even nails on their left hand, but short nails on the right hand, you can make a guess that that person not only plays the guitar, but is probably left-handed. Now, of course, don't reference the observation you make. Make up some other vague reason instead. Next, make likely predictions. These are predictions that have a high chance of happening in the near distant future. Some examples are, within the next year, you will receive an unexpected contact from someone you haven't heard from in quite a while. Or, in the years ahead, I can see an accident involving you or a member of your family and broken or falling glass. This is an easy hit as there's so many types of accidents involving glass. And the cool nature about future predictions is that no one can really accuse you of being wrong at the present moment. And oftentimes, if they don't come true, they'll forget about it. But if it does come true, you will be remembered and they might surprisingly contact you. The 12th technique is one-way verification predictions. These are predictions that you can never get wrong because people can only verify them if they become true. It's my absolute favorite. Here's an example. Someone you like is going to ask you out tomorrow, but may decide at the last minute not to do so due to shyness. See, if it actually happens, you're psychic. But if it doesn't happen, well, you're still right because she was shy. Other examples are, the end of the world is coming. Or, if you pray hard enough, it'll come true. Now, I only covered a fraction of the techniques you can learn from this book. Otherwise, this video would have been at least three times longer. But if you enjoyed these, there's a link in my descriptions to give you even more techniques and more examples, as well as more ways to handle situations when your guesses go wrong. Lastly, as a word of precaution, like with many of my persuasion videos, please don't use these techniques to scam and manipulate people. My guideline for manipulation is, if you're doing things that's taking value from people more than you're giving, then that's manipulation. 
But if you genuinely believe that you're helping someone, or providing entertainment like a magician, or creating win-win situations, then I'm cool with that. Now with that said, I want to know in the comments below which of these cold reading techniques did you like the most. Thanks for watching. I predict you'll choose one of the following. You'll either A. Subscribe and like. B. Listen to the share bear over there and show that you care. C. Watch this video that YouTube is recommending for you. Or D. Troll my comment section.